Welcome again, everyone. We are happy to have you here today for this webinar on Fundraising Made Easy through a successful travel program featuring Ian Scott. Before I turn the program over, we have a few housekeeping notes. First, please remember to place your phone on mute and refrain from placing the call on hold to avoid any background noise or unnecessary interruptions. Second, we have reserved time for questions at the end of this webinar. If you have any questions, please ask them using the question function in the webinar access panel. The question box is in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Just type in your questions and we will read them aloud. Third, this webinar will take no longer than an hour. It will be recorded and the link will be emailed to attendees. Ian Scott is the General Manager of Aventura World by Central Holidays West. Over the years, Aventura World by Central Holidays has been a reliable and trusted partner of ACCE. ACCE's leadership values the relationship which we have built over the years and have themselves participated on many of Aventura World trips. Now, here's Ian Scott. Thank you, Tenja, uh, for having me here today, and, and thank you all for joining me on our webinar today. Um, I take privilege uh, and, and, uh, in the fact of of being the official travel provider of ACCE, and um, it's a great organization, and uh, we love to be that uh, travel provider. Today, in a, with the aid of slides, we're going to bring forth a, a little overview of, of, of my company, Aventor World, and then a guideline into how to prepare and, and bring forth a, a successful chamber non-dues revenue fundraising program. Um, I'm a big believer in, in being as impartial as possible. Obviously, I'm, I'm uh, the uh, general manager and partner of Aventor World, so I do have a little bit of bias of that, and I will bring forth some information on the company. But then after that, we'll come into very frank and forthright conversations on how to prepare uh, you and your chamber or your staff uh, for success in this domain. So without further ado, um, off we go. Let's uh, bring forth um, what we're going to do. Uh, now, who is Aventura World? Well, we you may know us by Central Holidays West, but we went through a, an extensive rebranding process uh, last year. And uh, yes, we are now Aventura World. We're still the same company that's been involved in, in group, um, in the wholesale group travel market since 1972. Um, we are a member of Sakara International Travel Group with thousands of employees worldwide. They have riverboats, they own hotels, they have offices in London, Paris, uh, uh, Rome, Delhi, Cairo, as well as New Jersey and, and various satellite offices throughout the United States. Um, and as I mentioned, we're the uh, travel partner of ACCE. Um, we class ourselves as a full service wholesaler of travel, not a travel agent. As a wholesaler of travel, we bring forth tremendous value for money without affecting the quality by contracting directly at the source with hotels, buses, uh, guides, restaurants, and other components of a program. Um, but we're dedicated to bringing forth the treasures of the world to you at a relaxed pace. And we're also very much, our philosophy is designed for the International Awareness Program, which we'll um, uh, expand on in a moment. Lastly, we class ourselves as the leader in first class four-star programs in the United States. Um, and um, uh, if you've seen our programs, we hope, and our pricing, we hope you agree with that conversation. Now, uh, why did we uh, come forth with Aventura World? Aventura World is a, it, we, we are very much uh, involved in the experience of travel. And we felt that uh, uh, Central Holidays West didn't really come forth with, with what we wanted to bring with travel. So we really want to not only see the sights and sounds, but we also want to experience the local people, entrepreneurship in the um, uh, local environment, find places a little bit off the beaten track um, that you can say, hey, that's a little different. 
Yes, we'll still see the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and we will still see the Sydney Opera House or um, uh, the Colosseum in Rome. But, for example, we visit such things and, and cultural aspects as uh, entrepreneurship in Croatia, where we go to a farm, a farmer, and, and learn about uh, the multi-million dollar industry of truffle hunting. We bring forth history of apartheid uh, on a first-hand basis by uh, meeting an ex-prison guard who was one of Nelson Mandela's guards um, in uh, the, the uh, um, during apartheid. Find out how he developed his friendship with N Nelson Mandela and have a questions and answers period with him. We have uh, industry in, in Iceland where we go to thermal greenhouses and learn how um, vegetables are cultivated year round using thermal steam. Um, meeting in a pub, we always try whenever humanly possible to bring alcohol into the equation, um, whether it's ouzo tasting in Greece, uh, whether it's going to a pub in Ireland and meeting the locals and learning of the gossip while you have a Guinness or a, Scot a whiskey in your hand. Um, learning about the educational system in, in Egypt uh, firsthand with students. Uh, it's a wonderful experience where you're met at the doorway with, lo with local Egyptian students with a, with a chocolate in their hand. They give you a chocolate, they bring you inside, you meet the teachers, learn, you sit down in their classroom, you learn about the education system, and you learn from firsthand through these pupils about the education system. Wonderful memories to be had. Now, travel is an education and it is a privilege. And I bring that forth on a daily conversation with our partners and our future partners. Um, now, there are best practices of a starting an, an international awareness program. I do call them international awareness programs. And this will become apparent in a moment with one of the audiences and one of the benefits that it brings to local community. But the benefits of, of, of starting a program are, of course, the easy one, non-do revenue. I am told by chamber uh, professionals, a travel program is so much easier and quicker than a golf tournament, than a, a, a village fair, or something, so a street fair, or other aspects. So yes, it's a great way to bring forth with a low cost of sale, and labor cost, uh, non-dues revenue. Uh, it's a great way to bring an international footprint to your chamber. Your chamber may not have an international footprint, so this is a great way to bring that uh, together. Um, it's a great way to take a leadership role in the local community by creating this international awareness program, taking members, non-members, overseas to learn about the environment, the history, uh, the business practices, social practices and values of that particular area. And it is such a great um, uh, benefit for members of the local community when a chamber does this. A great incentive to send staff for free or a, a discounted uh, travel on the program with those travelers. Lastly, it's fun and easy, um, and it builds long-lasting relationships. Once you have a travel pro program going, these travelers will come year in, year out. It does build strong, binding relationships with you, your members, and members of the local community. Now, in this, dis in this webinar today, we wish to discuss the steps to create a successful program. There are many, but these are the main points to bring forth um, a successful program. We're gonna discuss, and now I'm in the, the non-Aventura world section, uh, we're gonna discuss the criteria of selecting a partner. We certainly hope it is Aventura world, but uh, we're gonna discuss what we believe you should find in your partnership. Uh, selecting a destination, we're going to discuss that. How do you select a date for travel? There are so many dates, so many departures. Um, what is the criteria for that? How many trips should I plan on an annual basis? 
Who are my prospects? Who are the people? Especially if you haven't traveled before, how am I going to find these people? And who are these people? Important questions to ask. And the horizons of time. When do I start a travel program? We're going to discuss the marketing aspect and what your partner should bring forth. Uh, and we're going to talk about the, the member traveler benefits. And lastly, complementaries on a trip. These are very, very important. And they are super important in the success of your program. Now, what makes a good travel company? How can you select uh, a partner for this adventure? Well, um, it should be a company that has fundraising travel experience, not vacations. There's a difference between the distinction of fundraising travel and vacations. Vacations are usually into the sun, pina colada, an umbrella sat on the beach, usually with family. You know that if you're going to go on a vacation, you've got 10 people because, you know, you've got Uncle Tom from New York. You've got Aunt Agnes from from in Mississippi, and, and you've got your 10 family members. When you start a fundraising international awareness program, you're not really sure where these travel travelers are coming from. So somebody that can help you and bring forth advice on fundraising programs is important. A company that does not advertise price is paramount to you. Why? When you're starting a program, you may make a little less uh, than actively promoting chambers out there. The important part of, of getting a program up and running is getting the program up and running, getting, getting the affinity going. We have some partners that bring forth $200, $300 a person uh, markup on their trips, yet we have long-standing partners that have built up their criteria that make a lot more money. Um, so it's important that your travelers cannot piece by piece and break away the price. So you'll find uh, we don't actually advertise any prices on our website. Um, you all, all conversations are done on a one-to-one -one basis. And that's what we recommend that you do uh, is have one-to-one -one conversations on pricing so your travelers can't break away the program. A company that designs its own programs. By designing their own programs, they control the quality, they know the ins and outs of it, and they know the positives and negatives of all programs. All programs have positives and negatives, and it's important that you know about them so that you can speak correctly about it. A company that offers unique destinations, not offered inside the community. So, you know, it's a destination if you're in, for example, Seattle, not to offer Pacific Northwest trips, uh, or if you're in Miami, don't offer um, um, such programs as Miami cruises. Um, we don't offer Miami cruises. We'll talk about that in a moment. But you know, don't offer something that's really easy to find in your local community. Um, but it offers the full package from destination management, creating those programs themselves, marketing. And creating brochures for you, and we'll discuss a bit more about this in a moment. The technology that will bring forth um, a, a, a great labor uh, a, a reduction to you. Business development, somebody who can help you with the program, who knows the program, um, and accounting. Um, and a, a company that can offer the power of shared departures. Now, the Shared departures, some people call them guaranteed departures. We call them shared departures. Uh, if you're starting out on a program, you uh, may not, again, not know who your travelers are. You might not know how many people you're going to get. So a shared departure is where um, a company will take one or two or three other entities and put you all together on the said same date so that you know the trip's going to go. So your marketing and endeavors do not go um, without, without uh, passengers traveling on the trip. Lastly, and this is one of the most important one, a company that protects your affinity. We're discussing travel here, 
But really, this is an affinity building program. Chambers are fabulous at building affinity. But the last thing that you want to do is to have your partner start marketing directly to your travelers. You've spent all those, those hours uh, finding people, doing your marketing plan, getting people to go to the destination with you. Um, you don't need uh, somebody then in, in a travel company to start marketing directly to them. You do one trip a year. A travel company could have up to 50, 100, 200 trips that that traveler of yours could go on. So it's rich, very, very difficult for you to compete once a, 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 a travel company markets directly to your affinity. Um, now, you need to be uh, partnering with a company that offers financial security. I want to lightly come across this, but this is a very important section. Uh, many of you who have been in the in the travel forum for a while may remember this, but some may not. But let's let's have a chat of it. The last thing you want to do is to to flush your water, flush your, the money down the sink. About six years ago, a company called ABC Destinations went out of business, and they left about 28 chambers, 1,100 passengers without a program that they paid for. This was an issue in the chamber industry, and we felt that it would be a bad mark on the industry and it maybe stagnate the industry. So Aventura World came out and we bailed out the 28 chambers. We found assistance to gain their money back, the, each traveler their money back through the credit card companies. Then we rebooked them on the said same program. Some of them were very quick, within two weeks, the company went out of business and these passengers were going on a trip within two weeks after it. So it was a, a, a big event for us. Um, for the people who uh, paid by personal check, we did a, a very gracious thing back then. We paid for everybody who had paid by personal check because that money had gone. It had disappeared wherever. Now, it was a... This is a situation that you have to avoid at all cost. Uh, paying, uh, I, we strongly recommend you have a partner that advertises and will take credit cards. There are many entities out there in the marketplace right now that advertise fictitious early bird discounts. If you pay by XX amount uh, and pay final payment by check, you will qualify by a reduction of $100. My conversation to you is try not to get into the same situation as those chambers did with, Aven with, um, uh, with ABC Destinations and offer the check discount or only take money by checks. Um, for a measly $100, you're better protecting yourself and the chamber by making sure that your travelers take and pay everything by credit card. If you do that, you're under no issues in any shape or form. And, and money, even if a company goes out of business, the traveler will gain their money back via the credit card company. Um, now, selecting a destination, importantly. Um, there are many, many countries, many, many destinations out there. Um, but I, I break it down to three really important um, issues that you need to address when selecting a destination. There are no guarantees in my industry, but if you adhere to these uh, sections here, there's a better possibility of success. So to select a destination, again, as I mentioned earlier, not readily available in the local area and not in the Sunday newspaper. I bring to thinking, don't do um, Miami Caribbean cruises, Alaska cruises, New England cruises. Um, that's a mass market product. Uh, you're competing against a computer and an internet booking engine and maybe a loss, what's called a loss leader price in the Sunday newspaper, a price that's good for one person out of 4,000 people on the cruise. You're in a lose-lose if you get into that style of a market. Um, a destination that's around nine days, 
10 days max. Again, that's not easily traveled to in your local area. Try and avoid um, areas that you might have a large uh, local inhabitants of. For example, I I'm sorry for the interruption. Ian, are you there? Did we lose you? Ian, again, are you there? Can you hear me? Okay, everyone, apologize, apologies for the interruption. Let me figure out what is going on. It looks like we're having some sort of technical difficulty. Please stay with us. Stand by, please. Hello. Hello, Ian. Are you there? Okay. I am. Thank you for your text. All right. Yes. I do course, apologize. Where did we get to? Where did I drop off? It's right at the beginning of the plan for the success slide, I believe, right around the, the first one or two bullets. So feel free to just okay. start that slide at the beginning. Thank you very much. Okay. All You're right. Welcome. You're welcome. So off we go. So uh, planning for the success. I do apologize for everybody. Thanks for staying with me. Planning for success. So this particular program um, is built on um, a, a nine day, seven night style of a program. Give or take a day either, either way. Um, the least amount of packs and unpacks. The age group of your travelers is going to be in that 55 to 70 years old, uh, members and non-members. Those are the people that have disposable income to travel and, and important 
time to travel to. So the least amounts of packs and unpacks are most uh, uh, pleasurable to that entity. Have air from your home airport or local airport whenever possible. Um, first class centrally located hotels. Um, included meals. Not all. Why? Well, you know, it's important to have included breakfasts, some lunches, some dinners, but then people want to go out and experience the destination with their newfound friendships off of the program. So don't include all the meals, uh, included tours. Again, the same thing, not all, and why? Uh, in a travel fundraising program, you want to throw the largest net possible. The largest net possible are people who have been on uh, travel programs, package programs before, and maybe the independent traveler who hasn't. The independent traveler would love to have things arranged for them like airfare, local guides, hotels, meals, included tours, but then they also like a few free days to wander off and relax by themselves. Uh, that's why don't include all the tours. But then again, um, somebody who's been on a package tour before might want to be on the go every minute of the day. So that entity would have to offer optional events for them optional tours on those days that are free. In that case, you throw the largest net possible uh, to the widest uh, audience. Again, this is fundraising program. The more people you can attract, the more non-dues revenue you gain. Lastly, uh, a program that really can't be found outside the chamber marketplace. Um, something a little different, something a little unusual uh, is important. Um, assistance from the company. Get back to that partnership again. Business development help. Somebody that's been to these destinations that knows the, the cafe on the corner, that knows the driving time between point A and point B, who can assist you in getting the message out, ideas on how to market and such things as that. Um, and lastly, a staffer to go on the trip. Um, a chamber staffer. I wish I could say that the reason that your travelers are going on the, the, the program with you is because of Aventura World or the travel company that you selected. But it's not. The reason is, is because they want to have a connection with you, the chamber. You have a great name in the local community. Your members have an ability to, to interact with you, but members of the local community historically do not have a vehicle to be able to interact with you. These international awareness programs build that vehicle that these people can interact with you. They want to come into the chamber building, uh, meet you, and they would love to come on the program with you. And we're going to discuss a little bit more about going on the programs with your travelers and what you can do with that. But that's an important part of it. We have um, chamber partners that might send three, four, five, people on the programs. Well, they have big programs, but they might send five staffers on a trip to um, interact with their travelers, but definitely one is recommended. Now, selecting a date. It might be just as easy, you think, as throwing a dart in a dartboard, but there are some ways that you can better succeed on your travel program. Um, and a question that you may wish to ask, or, you know, when are the value periods in the destination that you want to travel to? The chamber marketplace is a value priced marketplace. Um, it isn't a, a summer in Europe type of a destination marketplace. Your travelers <coughs> want to go on trips multiple times annually. So they save their money for it. So it's a value priced marketplace. When's the, the value periods? When is the weather not good at home? Try not to uh, to operate a program when maybe the the flower the spring is coming and the and the and the, the peach blossoms are coming out at home and the the, the weather is just spectacular. Uh, try and pick a, a period when the weather is kind of poor. Um, when do you need your profit for travel? Is it first quarter? Is it second quarter? third or fourth, and, and, and to take that one step further, 
what is your uh, what is your budget year? Is it a calendar year? Is it a fiscal year? When do you need the the, the profit from this uh, program? When do you need your non dues revenue in? That can tell you when you should be uh, traveling. Importantly. Um, when can I dedicate time to launch the program? I can give you a program that's worth $10,000 and give it to you for a dollar, but unless you get the message out, it's going nowhere. So when can you dedicate time to launch the program? Um, it is isn't a whole host of work, and it's what chambers do the best, I believe. You get the message out. You network. You, you bring forth affinities. You do a great job at this, whether you're in New York, California, Texas, uh, Oregon, you do such a great job in Chamberland. Um, your um, responsibility in this format is get the message out. And then your partners have the program, they have the marketing materials, they have the business development to assist you with collecting those travelers. Avoid things such as uh, uh, graduation days and such things as that. Um, so uh, graduation days, Thanksgivings, um, Easter periods and holidays such as that are very, very important. Um, and, and again, sections that you need to do. Now, uh, how many trips a year should we plan? Uh, it's a, a, a very difficult one. Um, and it, it, this is fundraising travel, but it is also building affinity and camaraderie in the program. So the way that the program works is that um, John and Alice go on a program and they, they meet friends over there and they share the destination and the adventure together. They come home um, and they reconnect again and have dinner and social events together. Um, and they, again, make, make friends and, 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 and long lasting relationships together. Um, then, um, due to that positive experience, they, uh, on the trip itself, they invite family members, they invite, invite neighbors, um, friends to come on your future chamber trips. The more trips that you offer, the harder it is, harder it is to build affinity. And again, this, this program is all about building affinity. So hypothetically, if you do 50 people a year, you offer two trips a year, you might get 25 and 25. If you offer five trips a year, you might get 10 and 10. Um, we strongly recommend only offering one or two trips max a, a year uh, per calendar year. If you can get into the fact of producing uh, uh, between 60 and 100 people a year, on a trip, you might break out into two trips. Do two trips of 50. Your affinity is really strong at that stage. Um, and why not? Uh, but until you get to that format, we strongly recommend gaining the affinity and bringing forth um, the, uh, the, the camaraderie on the trip. Now, It's important that, you know, the travel for, uh, professional that re recommends, if, if somebody comes into your office and says, well, why don't you do three or four trips? You have to question, what is the point? W w what am I doing here? Are you going to be a travel agent or are you doing this for non-dues revenue for years into the future and building a strong foundation? One program a year <coughs> will bring you that strong foundation instead of two, three, four four trips. You're basically working for that company if you do it in such a way. Now, my prospects and who are the audience that I have in uh, for this? Well, board members. Board members usually have the money and time to travel. Chamber members, yes. Chamber members, um, again, um, are go a good audience, even though maybe the, 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 the younger entrepreneur is not. 
Member employees, yes, they are very strong candidates for this particular uh, venture. Family members of em employees, even stronger. They may not have the ability to, to come into the chamber building. And again, they want to have a connection. The general public is most important. If you want to make this program big, and if you want to gain uh, non-dues revenue from a source you currently do not have, the general public is very important. If you stay only within your membership, it will never get bigger than your membership itself. But by going into the local general public, uh, your numbers can, can bounce and, and, and grow and grow and grow and grow. Um, you build strategic alliances with people in, if you have a Rolodex, have a look in your Rolodex. Many of your members might be in of, of, of this and, and, and charity groups and organizations might want to partner with you. Local colleges and universities. I've, we have partners that have local colleges that uh, need a, an, a travel program. And we've done local college travel programs uh, by partnering with the chamber. Senior centers, a great place to get to that mature American traveler. And other fundraising operations and organizations you may be able to partner with. Now, there are a whole host of programs that you can do. If you're starting out uh, on a first-time program, I recommend coming with something with a bit of notoriety, something with a little bit of flair and fame to it, uh, a European program, maybe. Um, or, and as you grow and, and become a, uh, an international awareness powerhouse, you might get to a little bit more into the exotics like a, an Egypt or a South Africa or something a little bit more off the beaten track. Um, I do have to mention Egypt, uh, one of the fastest growing programs out there at this moment. It's our number one selling program and it is booming. So there's a possibility of a great destination not found anywhere else <coughs> and really not offered anywhere else too. Um, now, importantly, uh, the marketing aspect, getting the message out is important. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see the Jaffrey Chamber, uh, I believe in New Hampshire. <laughs> they have a big sign on the outside of the building by the tra uh, traffic lights. Everybody sees uh, about their, uh, their uh, trip to Ireland. It's some years old now, though but it talks about an info meeting and such things as that. But importantly, plan ahead. Uh, the earlier you promote a trip, the more people you'll have on it. I, I don't recall how many times I've heard a passenger say, if I'd have only known about this earlier, um, before I booked the said train trip for a lot more money, I would have gone with you. Start planning about nine months out. If you can do a year, out, that's great. We can do also a little less than nine months, but ideally nine months. Use Facebook and social media to get the message out. You've got member email blasts, uh, send out to members, photos, trivia on the destination itself. You've got newspaper ads. If many chambers have co-op with local newspapers and business journals. You've got ads in senior publications, uh, press releases, ways to get the message out, um, radio uh, spots, TV. Um, uh, the Hampton Roads Chamber uh, about four years ago did a, a spot on the local six o'clock news. Their program sold out within 20 minutes. Radio spots, um, uh, again, treat treat. This process, like you would be doing any other chamber event. Um, as you can see here, um, information um, of the Ulster Chamber up in New York when they did a, a chamber trip to Cuba a few years ago. Radio spots, a good friend of mine, Mike McMullen in Carroll County in Maryland, does a radio show on a Sunday morning. It's only four minutes, um, but he puts a little plug in about his trip. Uh, and in some cases, I've been on that radio show along with him. Uh, just talking a, a quick one minute about the trip, it gets the message out to 
so many avenues you don't normally do. Now, Mark is an assistant. I have to say what we bring forth. I will bring forth custom uh, full colored brochures with reservation forms on that. We've got camera ready advertisements. We've got uh, HTML video embedded emails. For those people who are on our email list, uh, you'll, you'll have seen them. Um, lovely, colorful emails with a video embedded. We make those customized for your trip, your logo, your chamber, your departure date. So you can set, we don't send them out for you because again, your travelers are your affinity and your goal. So we send it to you for you to send it out. We have full color wall posters that you can drop in the local newspaper shop or restaurants or um, places around town. We have a staff that's been there that can answer questions, that can present in live presentations and webinars. And we use technology of the web booking engine, which we're looking at here. It's important that you harness technology with your partner and have an internet booking engine. Now, we're getting very close to, to the end and, and, and free trips. Use them. I cannot state how important this is. We have complimentary spaces with every X amount of passengers, depending on the program itself. We strongly recommend use them by sending a staff member on the trip itself. The staff member can go on the trip and they, they again, these travelers are not on this program because of Aventura World or another uh, travel company. They're there because they want a connection with you. You can go and explore and build the affinity of your program as you ad have an adventure with them. You can understand why your travelers are traveling with you. Uh, you can find out about their lives. You can have uh, sidebar conversations on what the chamber is doing, shortfalls, things that you need. We have partners that have taken non-dues revenue travel into donorship travel. So now they not only have money coming in from non-dues non revenue by traveling on the program, but by talking to their travelers on the program, they gain donor dollars for events and happenings within the chamber. This can be done by traveling with your travelers. That international footprint, a good friend of mine, David Jameson from South Carolina in Aiken on an Austria and Germany program with us a couple of years ago, went to visit the local chamber in Innsbruck, met the chamber president who said, hey, it's, you're here, come to an event tonight. He met the governor of, of, uh, of the region the, the, the president of Austria. He met uh, local religious leaders in a cocktail hour and social of our hour. They have become friends uh, since. And, and these things would not happen if you didn't have an international awareness program. Now, if you haven't traveled with us before, I encourage you to come along with us. Each year we have um, fam trips. This year we're heading out on another, you can see a list. We've been to Dubai, we've been to Spain, we've been to the Amalfi Coast, we've been to Sicily, we've been to Egypt, we've been to Peru, and we've been to Tuscany. And if you'd like more information about our found trips, uh, let us know at info um, at aventuraworld.com and just say, drop me on the found trip line. We're going to Greece this year um, in November, November the 16th through to the 23rd, way away from uh, Thanksgiving. Um, and it's uh, along with ACCE, it's a whole host of fun. It's a whole host of interactions with the local community, with local business leaders and with local Chamber of Commerce executives in Greece. Last year in Italy, we were on the TV um, as we were sitting uh, with one of the local chambers. So it was a big event. Um, Sherry Ann from ACCE usually goes on the programs too. Here we can see it's a highly discounted price as it's sponsored by the, the local, in this case, the Greek government uh, and ourselves. Now, uh, adventure awaits. non do revenue is there for the taking. Um, travel, again, is an adventure. It's a privilege. 
and we certainly hope you'll, if you don't have a travel program, that you do start and come along with us uh, and start a travel program. Now, questions, other than where are my slides or where's the audio, does anybody have any questions for me, please? <laughs> Hi, Ian. It's, it's Tenjo. You know what? I mean, we send folks to the moon and all that good stuff, but we always have some sort of technical difficulty with, with phones and communications. It's such as life, right? But I do yeah. have a question um, for you. Just regarding feedback, can you give an example of a chamber that recently participated on one of these trips? the feedback that they gave you and um, how they benefited from it and just what they thought of it? Well, we have a couple of, 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 of really strong traveling chambers on this webinar today. I know we've got uh, Karen from the uh, from Roanoke in, um, in uh, Texas, and we've got um, um, uh, Teresa from, from Caldwell in, in uh, Idaho. Um, and, and and you know those are those are great resources because they do this travel program really well. Um, but um, and I do apologize if, if there's somebody else I can't see everybody that's on the program. Um, but what you'll find is is uh, many things. One, a revenue stream that you're not normally able to gain. Um, an easy form of revenue stream, which is fun. Because you're, there is a, a fun event at the end of it to travel to an international destination. Two, building awareness with members and building a, a community of travel through international awareness with local members of society um, in, the, in and around the local area. Um, I think those are the major things that we bring forth with and we hear um in in the in the marketplace and lastly as i said building up that revenue stream and, and possibly into uh, an, an information session of of what the chamber's doing in the local community and 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 how uh, interaction with members of the local community on a, a trip to whether it be peru or italy or greece um is valuable to you wonderful thank you for that um, another question: When the I guess when the 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 trip is built, um, do any of the chambers have any I guess say so in the activities, or is that something that Aventura kind of does on its own? I know you pointed out earlier about minimizing so many pack and goes necessarily. So, is there any input that any of the chambers might have on these particular trips? I think one of the things to the, the, and, and there's a whole host of different conversations we can have on a one-to-one -one basis on this. We bring forth a, a tried and tested program that has been operated for years in, year out. Um, so we bring forth a, a program. There are there is some customization to that based on based on various aspects, and there are some areas that cannot be customized. If you have a program and you've been operating a program for for the last X amount of years, and you get 20, if you get 30, 40 people each year on that program, we'll send you to the moon. But we'll we'll discuss that, um, and we'll we'll customize a full program for you in that particular case. And we do have partners that do that. But other than that, we do bring um, we do bring a, a program price that that you'll be at a market uh, that, that all the marketing materials are made for, like webinars like um, uh, p uh, PowerPoint presentations, um, like uh, YouTubes, like uh, HTML files with video um, uh, embedded. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ian. And it looks like we don't have any additional questions. Again, everyone, I want, oh, wait a second. Just give me a moment, Ian. It looks like something may have just popped through. Avin, this is from Allison Amato. Aventura sounds like a big company. Do we have our own dedicated contact? Will different employees be doing events? Uh, yes and yes. So you will have your own dedicated uh, connections. We we are we're, we're a family company. The way that I bring this through our networks, we're a large company through our worldwide network. But in the United States, we class ourselves as a family orientated company. Um, you will have 
your own business development person who will be guiding you through the process. You will be assigned an operations person inside the office itself, which will take you through the operational process of it. You'll be assigned a reservations person that will be taking you through that aspect. And together as a team, we'll bring forth uh, everything that you'll need. Things that you don't see are, of course, our, our marketing team that create all the information that comes through your business development person, our product planners that have spent years and years and years overseas, uh, contracting programs, designing programs. You don't get to see those, and that's a little bit more of the, the back office that you don't get to see, or, you know, our, our accounting department. Uh, who will be managed through our operations department. You don't get to see any of those, but you will have focused people that are there to assist your success. Great, right, Anne, I have another question, and this question is from Karen Granade. And Karen, I hope I pronounced your last name correctly. Her question is, what are the two most popular trips scheduled for this year? Um, by far, the top uh, selling program in 2019 is Egypt. Uh, by uh, at least 50%. Secondly, then we get into um, Italy's are always favorites, and, and France is always a favorite. After that, it probably gets into France, and, and then after that, Italy is always in the top two or three every year. But um, um, a little bit like Cuba back in 2012. Uh, Cuba had been a destination that was not uh, easily traveled to back then before 2012. It became available. Um, people went on that trip. They were throwing money at chambers to go on the trip. That's the same thing that's happening with Egypt right now. Uh, Egypt hasn't been readily available since 2005, 2006, 7, somewhere around about there in a, in, a, in a large format. It is booming right now. It's a safe and stable destination. Uh, we don't take anybody to war zones. Um, and um, it's, without a doubt, it's our number one uh, destination for 2019 coming into seeing for 2022. Well, Ian, thank you so much for this webinar. Ian, I keep getting questions, which is wonderful. I think another one just popped there through. You. All right, thank you, Ben, so for this question that we have that you posed. How does the chamber make money off the trip? What can we expect yes. to bring back to our chamber if we get 40 signed up for a trip? Great, good question, excellent question. So um, as a wholesaler, we bring forth um, the program, we have a conversation. So we will have the conversation with you. We'll discuss all the aspects that we went through. When would you like to travel? When, what is the, what is the, when do you need the, the, the revenue? Um, uh, when is weather, you know, not, not great at home? All those, those um, uh, questions. We don't walk into a destination and say, hey, you have to do this particular destination. We go through a, a, a qualification sheet. At the end of that, a, a destination will pop out. Um, and we'll discuss that. And then out you go and off you go and market it with our, with our marketing materials that we bring forth. On our programs, the wholesaler, uh, we will bring a net price to you and we will indicate in that price to you, not to your travelers. Again, our commitment is that uh, your travelers cannot uh, breakaway pricing of your trip, but we'll indicate either 200, 300, or whatever amount of money is included in those wholesale prices to make your non dues revenue uh, amount. For every passenger that you produce, you will get that amount. Um, now, there are no free lunches in life, but um, and, and I'm very frank about this. All our free spaces are negotiated. We don't add X amount of dollars into a program to give you a free. 
As a wholesaler, we negotiate with the airlines, hotels, buses, restaurants, and such things. So you get a good price with free spaces in there. Historically, our price, our programs have a one free space in 20. After that, uh, and we, as soon as you hit 20, we recommend you, you, you're the person on the trip. Um, after that, if you gain additional ones, you can sell back the freeze to the chamber for additional revenue. Now, okay, as yeah, I said, no free lunches in life. There are some entities that will offer you a one free in 15, a one free in 10. Then, like anything, uh, you know, money's been added in there. Our philosophy is come out with one heck of a price to gain one heck of a, a good amount of people and for you to make money on the trip itself. Wonderful. Okay, Ian, we have two more questions in three minutes. Let's see, can we get through both of them? The first one from Alex okay. Amato. Will the trip be just our travelers or are we put in a group with other chambers? Okay, uh, that's a question I can't answer right now. Um, I, I, I'm a big believer if you don't ha currently have a, a, tra a travel program that you go into one of our shared departures. Then you know that if you produce, we all want to produce 50, 60, 70 people, but if you've never done this before, you don't know what your result is. Um, historically, chambers will always produce between 30 and 40 people, but you never, again, you don't know. Um, it's all about getting the message out. But for the first one at times, I recommend if you haven't got that program, come into your shared departure, uh, and then you know if you get two people, 10 people, then the trip's going to go. Every travel company out there, that's why there's no guarantee. We don't use the word guaranteed departure. There are no guarantees. Uh, every departure is going to need 30 people to operate. So hypothetically, if you're new to the industry and you get 15 people, then if there's two people with fifth, two chambers or two groups with 15 on there, the trip goes. If you produce 10 and another one produces 20, then the trip goes. So that's one of the things with the shared departures. If you have a history of producing um, 40, 50 people on, a, uh, on, a, on a, uh, uh, an annual basis, then we have a conversation about you having your own departure. Wonderful. Okay, and the last one, which is less of a question and more of a comment from Karen Grenade. I have 42 going to Tuscany in October. We'll, we will be adding about $16,000 to the chamber coffers. Well, yes, Karen, that's great, isn't it? And 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 thank you for that comment. Uh, you know, I can tell you about fundraising, um, but until a chamber exec actually says this is what we've got, uh, it's it's only words. So thank you, Karen, for that. Yep. All right, Ian, we are just a minute shy of the top of the hour. Thank you again. Everyone, I would like to thank you for your patience as we had just a few minor difficulties, but thank you for your patience. Thank you for staying on this webinar. Again, thank you to Ian Scott of Central Holidays, now Aventura. Thank you, everyone. Thank Have you. a wonderful evening. Thank you, Tendra. And again, if you want additional information on the fam trip, send an email out to info at uh, aventuraworld.com uh, and, and we'll be back with you. Uh, thank you for your time and sorry for the technical difficulties. No worries. Thank you, Ian. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.